Welcome to From Overwhelmed to Organized. Today's session is about tips and strategies of action and information management. I'm Anna, if you don't know me. In today's episode, we're exploring the world of productivity and information management with our guest, Tim from the Netherlands. I'm not gonna try and pronounce his family name. He'll let us know what it, how it, he spells it in a bit. But before we get started, I wanna remind everyone that when we talk about strategy, and today we are talking about strategy, it's important to remember a few things. The first thing is that if you already have a productivity strategy that is working for you, please do not change it. Because getting uh, used to a new habit or a new system is going to take a lot of effort. Plus, you need to migrate all your to-dos and projects and information to a new system. So be very mindful of that. So I'm saying this from the beginning. So if you really love what Tim's sharing, you need to do a lot of thinking if you want to switch to a new system. <laughs> and Tim's laughing because he knows this. Like I've migrated from so many tools and so many systems. So I'm speaking from experience. So I want to ask everyone here to think about your intention. Why are you joining this uh, call today? Why are you listening in? What's your intention? Is the, your current productivity system not working for you? Are you looking for a new system that might work for you? Then great, listen in, take a lot of notes. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat. If your productivity system is working well for you and you're just curious, that's great too. You can multitask and, you know, well, listen to us while you're driving or doing the dishes and not take notes, that's totally fine too. But make sure you know what your intention is because you can get a lot of value from this session. If you really need it, you need to take notes. So before we get started and before I introduce Tim, I want us all to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out so that we are in the moment, in the present moment and fully present right with us during this one hour that we're gonna to spend together. So let's take a deep breath in and exhale another one and exhale and the third one and exhale. We should all be now in a deeper, healthier level of our minds, fully present in the present moment. Hopefully you have your water with you. You don't need to use the restroom for the next hour. You're fully present. You're in a state of being that allows you to be fully present and not distracted. Meaning there's nothing top of mind right now. If you're thinking of something else, please write it down so you can focus with us. If you're looking at any other tabs on your computer, please make the Zoom screen super big <laughs> and focus with us. Okay. And hopefully everyone's ready. I want to welcome Tim, my new friend and acquaintance from uh, the Mind Valley community. Tim was here in Dubai a few weeks ago attending Mind Valley Live, and we had lunch together. And when from one topic to the next, when I found out that he's into productivity and he was talking about these new terms that I haven't heard of action management and information management, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so curious. And because I, my whole, whole life was about productivity, and Rise and Eagle is about uh, systems and organization and information management. I'm like, I need to have you live with the Lifeful community and the Eagle's Nest community. So thank you, Tim, for joining us today. I want to hear first, who are you? Introduce uh, yourself to our guests here and the listeners uh, in the future. Who are you Perfect. and why productivity? Why? why action management and information management well thank you for the introduction very sweet of you to also give me the platform to elaborate on my ideas uh, my name is tim Hoogts, so it's pronounced uh, pretty dutch to be honest 
Um, I am an electrical engineer by profession. I'm very data driven. I have done some um, some jobs regarding the um, the smart grids and how to uh, do electrical engineering, basically, and stuff like that. And at a certain moment in time, I started noticing that my email box was kind of getting filled and I was receiving stress because of it as me not being in control and not knowing where all the informations and pieces and bits are. Um, so basically, I started researching that. Um, started researching the big names regarding this subject. Uh, regarding uh, David Allen, Tiago Forte, and there's someone else for the Zettel Custom Method, but we will get to that. Um, and during that time, I started focusing myself on action management. Um, but maybe that's that's also, I want to give you some room to ask the questions as well. But that's a little bit my background. I live in the Netherlands. Um, I only recently joined the Mind Valley community uh, about six months ago, and I really, I'm really loving, loving it, as in the transform transformation that I'm having as a person, um, including the people, how they are, the community around it. So I'm really thankful for uh, being here, basically. Well, thank you for your introduction, Tim, and thanks for being with us. I'm really looking forward to this chat today. So what is action management? I mean, we hear task management, we hear project management, we hear time management, but action management is a new term for me. Did you coin it? Did you, who, who, who wrote, who came up with this concept? What is it about? Um... I think David Allen also talks about it. David Allen is the is the founder of Getting Things Done. Mm -hmm. He is um, thirty five years now already in the in the business a little bit, mm -hmm. and it um, it talks about everything that you have to do is an action basically. So I have action driven mindset, as in a new piece of information is coming in. For example, our meeting that we had, as in ah, this might be an option as um uh, to talk to each other regarding a, in a podcast mm -hmm. um then i wrote down okay find a, a contact with anna for this and this and this and send her a summary of the things that you're working on mm -hmm. so everything i'm getting is an action mm -hmm. um and when i'm writing it down then i'm processing it into my system and that creates a state of being where I am fully present in the now, mm -hmm. basically, because everything is fixed. Mm -hmm. And the big difference between action management and time management is you cannot manage time. Time is relative. We only have right here, right now. Mm -hmm. We, of course, have plans in the future, as in we have a meeting tomorrow. This mm -hmm. podcast is, of course, a time-bound action, but it's an action. Mm -hmm. um, but my action list isn't reserved, as in between four and five, I have to do this, this action, I have to do that action, that action. Because then you're kind of limiting yourself in the idea of you have to be somewhere in a certain amount of time, or you have to do certain um, certain things in a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit the difference. Mm -hmm. And what what I do is I use it, I'm using the getting things done method. When I'm receiving an action, or when an action comes into my desk, basically, mm -hmm. um, it is divided to next action, someday action, maybe action and a waiting for action mm. or a calendar. That's basically the, 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 the possibilities, mm. which creates, it's a method. So it's not really a system that I use. So it's not as in notion or calendar or whatever. Um, it's a method. It's a way of thinking and you can write it down on paper. You can use software for it. 
everything is, is allowed. Mm -hmm. It's a way of thinking on when something's happened or when you receive a new piece of action, then you process it and you have a location where it goes. Mm -hmm. Which means that you can be fully present in the now, right here, during this hour, during our conversation. Mm -hmm. No bleeps, no, not thinking about, ah, that I have to do that part, I have to do that part, I have to do that part. Mm -hmm. So one of the introduction tips that you gave, as in, if you're thinking about something, write it down and be fully present here. Mm -hmm. Basically, I am doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm writing stuff down. And so that that's the um, that's the difference between when I'm creative, I'm just writing things down, or when I'm remembering something, writing stuff down, and then it's outside of my head, and then I can be fully present mm -hmm. with you. And for me, it created so massively a much much time that I could think about other pieces of things that I was working on. Um, so basically, yeah, so Tim, you're saying that whenever someone gives you a task or whenever you have something in your inbox that is a task for you, you're just filing it into these um, sort of categories like do I need to do this next? Do I need to do this? Oh, this is something I might do someday, maybe, right? So is that is that how you're how you're categorizing it? That's what I'm getting, right? Basically, yeah, yeah. and you're putting it out of your mind. You're not saying, oh, I need to respond to that email. I need to respond to that email. I need to do this. You're just putting it somewhere and forgetting about it. No stress. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. um, the thing what was very useful for me is using an, an um, inbox, basically. Mm -hmm. And your inbox, that's your bucket of ideas, of your actions, of whatever you want. Um, and the, the goal is to have an empty inbox every day, yeah. constantly. So when you have your bucket of ideas, information, whatever, they, um, you have to translate them into actions. What do you want to do with it? For mm -hmm. example, when you receive an email, the receiving an email isn't a task by itself mm -hmm. and when someone asks a question it's not a task itself mm -hmm. but you, then you write down in your bucket or in your action list respond to that client or send him mm -hmm. the the bill or whatever that that you have to do mm -hmm. then you write down the thing that you have to do mm -hmm. and then it comes into the lists as in mm -hmm. filtered mm -hmm. and then you'll be fully present back at the moment. Then you archive your mail, your mail is empty. Um, and it creates control somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tim, uh, can you remind us of the the categories where you're filing these actions? You were saying, what, what are the next action? Uh, what yeah. are they? Yeah. I'll, I will elaborate a little bit uh, deeper into that as well. Uh, there are four categories, actually five, but mm. four is next action, um someday maybe and waiting for list mm. and then you have the time and uh yeah the time bound events. actions yeah on the calendar the events yeah. but actually they are also actions mm -hmm. because our conversation is me being here with you that's the action mm -hmm. it is within a certain yeah. time limit but if i don't have an action somewhere if i don't have a clear purpose mm. then i'm not being there because mm -hmm. everything is action driven everything is what is my impact on the world mm -hmm. um, and those five categories next actions are actions that you could do right now mm. if you have a spare yeah. one hour somewhere call these three clients and letting them know whatever or sending those emails or, or doing this or exercising it doesn't have to be business wise um, so you don't uh, categorize it, uh, sorry, Tim, you don't categorize them into, uh, projects or anything like, how do you, uh, handle them or are they, or is project management separate? That's kind of the next step. 
I, I'm mm. combining the, those two, mm -hmm. uh, but right now I will I will explain the, the actions itself. Okay. Um, so next actions are things that you can do right now. There is no limitation as in waiting for new information or waiting for the client or waiting for mm -hmm. approval of the boss, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do them right now. Mm -hmm. Then you have the someday actions. Mm -hmm. And these are the actions that are limited by something or a situation or um, you first have to do a next action before you can do the someday action. There are some what um, there is a limiting factor for that. Hmm. So for example, um, when, when you have a whole project and your project is built out of 10 steps, then only the first step is a next action and the other nine are someday actions. Hmm. So that is the, that's the hmm. second one. And then the third one is the maybe actions. Um, maybe it would be fun if I do this. Maybe it would mm. be fun if I write a review. Maybe it would be fun if. Um, so that's what a lot of people do is they prioritize the things that they have to do. And the other ones are, mm, it would be okay if they would do that, but I have a clear separation between those two. So you have full control over your actions yeah. all of the time. Yeah. Mm. So prioritizing doesn't exist, but we will get to that later. Yeah, exactly. That, <laughs> that's interesting. I want to get to that. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to stop your train of thought. Yeah, mind is like, um, okay, right? Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you have the, the waiting for actions. Um, and for me, waiting for, there are a little bit differences between that within the community, but... Mm. Um, waiting for is, for example, when I'm sending out an email or a text to someone and I expect an answer from that from that person back, I write that down. I'm waiting for the response of that person. Yeah. So that creates the room for me looking back into my system and, and seeing, okay, there are seven people who haven't responded yet. Okay, one person hasn't responded for two weeks already. Hmm, might send them... Mm -hmm. a reminder and if you do that during um, or in a business setting then people colleagues will know ah he's so on top of things he wants to to have it you can't let that slide basically so people recognize your productivity and they recognize your you're in full control of all your actions yeah yeah so that's for the business case quite useful yeah um so that's the that's the someday mm -hmm. and then you have the, the calendar and the calendar is basically time bound mm. it could be a session like this between three or four as in my time zone uh, mm. you have to be in that location with those people but it also can be on monday you have to call that person mm. not on sunday not on friday on Monday, because you've you made a deal, as in ah, I will call you after a week, for example. Yeah. So that's different than next actions. Next actions, you can do that right now. You can put a deadline on next actions, but there is a little bit of difference between that. So everything is method based. Okay. Can you? quickly touch up on uh, the difference between because i heard you say methods and not systems like what uh, what are, what is the difference between methods and systems for for you um my system is combination of notion combination of google uh, calendar uh, mm. combination of my gmail those are software and also my paper is also a system mm -hmm. what do i actually use to create my um to do my methods mm. so getting things done uh, the uh, of the variation of getting things done that you've created that you call action management is the method but you use different tools to use that method that's what you're calling the system great yeah right yeah and uh, the action management isn't really my thing as in uh -huh. i haven't um came up with it yeah that's mostly david allen so all the credits mm -hmm. for him yeah has mm -hmm. been amazing uh, with that uh, part 
yeah good so this is the book uh, where uh, basically uh, everything is, uh, mm. is located in in details yeah amazing Thank you. So I love the way that you've broken down the someday maybe because that has always been confusing to me because there are things that I want to do someday that I want to do or I need to do. But then the maybe is like a lot of times when I go to my maybe list, I'm just like, oh, I outgrow this. I don't want to do it anymore. I just like it's totally different. And it was weird for me to see that in the book saying someday and maybe at the, like as a one category. So I love that you broke that down. Thank you uh, for that point. So let's uh, let me check my notes on this topic, because I also want to talk more about information management, which is uh, something I perfect love but yeah uh, let's go back because i remembered i had a question prioritization so how, how do you say that, that there's no need for prioritization how do i know that i'm at any moment i'm working on what i need to be working on and not missing important stuff because if i put everything in these lists it's like how do i know what is next what comes next doesn't that create stress <laughs> um prioritization doesn't exist hmm. basically you only have one priority mm -hmm. that's being here right now with you if something happens with whatever if i see an accident then that is the prioritization or that's the the yeah prior the, yeah um so you only have one mm -hmm. priority that's the word priority yeah that's being here in the moment you can have your system and you can have your methods and your deadlines. That's another thing. But you don't have priorities, the mm -hmm. multiple form. Yeah. I have heard, I haven't checked it in detail, but I like the story, so I'm going to tell it. Mm -hmm. um, priorities has been made up. Uh, the word priority has been made up 500 years ago during the uh, the little bit, the, the, the industrial revolution and the the coming up of, of managers who are managing people. Mm -hmm. And they kind of said, you have to prioritize the things that I think are important. Mm. So they kind of taught it wrongly to the, to the people uh, mm. that were working for them to just have their attention as in, no, I want you to focus on this one. This is the priority. This is the priority. But yeah. So I don't know how how correct that is, but yeah, I I heard the word that there I haven't I wasn't familiar with the story, but I knew that the word priority never had a plural until they created it for it. So yeah, uh, I I like that idea. But okay, so we we okay I I agree that there should be one priority. There are no priorities, but uh, because. We live in a day and age where we have so many things we want to do. Are you saying that if I put it, the right tasks in the now bucket, like things I can do now, or yeah. and then the next item list and the someday, I've already kind of prioritized them. I'm kind of said what's next is has a deadline or is more important while yeah, the but, someday. But you haven't prioritized them. You have organized them. What? And if, if you're organized, <laughs> yeah, but not really, because mm -hmm. then it means that one task has priority over another one. Mm. And in, in my method, it doesn't. I'm fully in control and everything has the same value. If something isn't the same value, then I'm reviewing it and I'm archiving stuff and I'm stopping the task. Mm. But everything has basically the same value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think we need to think a little deeper about this, but we don't have the time during this call. But if this is a great topic. <laughs> write it down. Really think about it. We and and send us. Uh, I'll I'll share Tim's LinkedIn links. Send us uh, your ideas. Perfect. Let's keep the discussion going on, because this is a huge, you know, discussion topic all the time. And I think that's one of the other things that creates the stress is I have so many things. How do I prioritize that creates a stress? Well, if you just do one thing after the next, you're just 
done with them. No need to prioritize, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the difficulty is, um, it is it will take an investment in time to actually start this. Um, for example, now I'm offering my three month course for it mm -hmm. to slowly build up the habit because it's basically building up the habit of actually um, staying on top of things. Mm. I haven't looked in my agenda for now two days and I already see some stuff. It's like, okay, I have to fix it again and then yeah. it will slow down and I'm fully in control again. Yeah. And especially when people have 3000 unread meals in their mailbox, then it creates open loops. It's also something that David Allen talks about. Mm. And open loops create stress basically for the human body because everyone you see that a little bit happening now everyone feels like they're busy they're busy they're busy but they're not really busy they're chaotic yeah and the solution of being chaotic is to organize things in mm -hmm. enough way to, so you can be fully present right here right now yeah amazing so let while we're talking about organization let's talk about another area that's chaotic which is information information is freely available these days and are very cheap and we we've been reading a lot of books and sometimes they're even proud of saying i i have so many notes but it's in chaos like how how do i manage this like tell me <laughs> oh that's a big uh, big question <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I do, I write. I write quite a lot. Um, I, I've also invested myself in uh, um, typing fast and blindly. So that's also good for the posture and, of course, the, the input that you can give for your ideas. So those meta skills are important. Um, but basically, I use the system of Tiago, Tiago Forte called PARA, and PARA is an acronym for Projects Area Resources, an archive. Um, and I'm going to start with, with uh, Area because a lot of your, uh, um, these people in the group are uh, within the Lifebook uh, community. Um, within Lifebook community, we have, of course, 12 areas of life basically and within an area so that's a square uh, um, it's a part of your life basically um for example your health or your financial work uh financial uh, things i don't know financial what the life, 12 yeah. Are. <laughs> yeah um and within the financial life for example you have a project and a project has one or two tasks within that so for example um running the marathon you have a very clear goal as in what do you have to do what kind of information do you need for that goal so it's goal driven um and you can it has an endpoint so after you finish that project you can put it to archive uh, yeah, I'm saying that correctly. You can put it to archive. And then you have the resources. And the resources are pieces of information that you have collected from books, from your own ideas, from whatever, that you are connecting to either the area or the project, or both. You can do that as well. Um, and that creates... For example, when you have contact information of a certain company that you need to contact for your project, then it's project related, but it's not area related. But if you have information as in, ah, this is how life works or how the human body works or whatever, then you put it in your health area. And when you are looking towards your area, then you see a couple of resources below that, and you can um, yeah, access that. You can access it quickly because you have a certain goal in mind, and the information is filtered 
it's not filtered on subject. That's the that's the biggest problem that people make. Mm-hmm. Um, ah, everything is filtered on psychology. Everything is filtered on physical health. Everything is filtered mm-hmm. on productivity, for example. Mm-hmm. But it's more like, where will you use this information that we are getting? Mm-hmm. In which part of your 12 areas will you use this part? Mm-hmm. Ah, it's not about really time management because we cannot manage time. It's managing actions. Okay, is there some project I can create to um, make that part of my life better? So that's that's a little bit the, the goal. Um, and you said as in, there are so many pieces of information coming towards us as in notifications and stuff. To be honest, um, we just have to be very careful with deciding which information that comes into our minds. Mm. Because in my experience, 90% you don't need. Mm. Maybe even 99%. Because mm-hmm. those are people who try to sell you stuff mm-hmm. or to want to grab your attention for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to be in control of what do I want to do with this piece of information if it's useful for you perfect and if it's useful then you can drag it into your bucket as in ah this is useful for my project or this is useful for my area mm-hmm. but you have to make, be selective with that information okay so let's recap so you said that for information management you're using tiago silva's para method and uh, PARA stands for Project, Area, Resources, and Archive, correct? Yeah. So um, you're saying that in the project, you have all the actions related to that project, but if you, need an, if you have any information also related to that project or resources, you're putting the resources also with the project. Yeah. But if, if the information is related to an area of your life, it's not necessarily actionable, it's just information that it's not part of a project. Then you have these areas like financial life, health and fitness. So that's where you put it. So for the Lifeful community, if I can give examples and you tell me if that's, if I understood correctly, if you're working on your health and fitness and you are uh, doing maybe wild fit, all the recipes from WildFit, you put them in your health and fitness area uh, and it's create a, like a library. But when you are, let's say, uh, when you're actually doing WildFit, there are tasks that you need to do, like exercises and whatnot. Then if you want to create, say, project WildFit for the next 90 days, then mm-hmm. I would put other types of notes that are related to the action items in that project? Or how, how would you do that? Or maybe we can ask you this in a few months when you do Wild <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Um, mm-hmm. Almost everything is um, has a certain goal. So almost everything is a project. Almost nothing is an area. Because, um, for example, if you want to eat healthier, mm-hmm. the, pro- the, the uh, project is build a habit of eating healthy. Mm-hmm. And it's not, the project isn't um, keep eating healthy. Because you um, invest a certain amount of time to build yourself a habit that after that it's going automatically. Okay, so that's that's a great example. So when does a project, like I don't want to have 20 projects going on at the same time, right? So when does a project become a habit or a ritual or a routine, whatever you call it, like re- cooking, right? It, it has to be, I, I can't, I don't want to make it a project each week, which will stress me and say, oh my God, I have, you know, like how, how do you turn projects into habits or routines or like where do do habits and routines live in the parameter if i may for for example when you're saying cooking um Mm -hmm. cooking is not a project Mm -hmm. cooking is so general 
Mm. Um, you can say, yeah. I want to cook as a four-star uh, chef, mm. something like that. Um, and then you can decide for yourself, okay, what kind of things do I have to do to, be, to, to make myself that skill, mm -hmm. to be, to have that skill. And then it creates certain actions to create that. Mm. And so it's not, it's not really cooking, mm -hmm. but it's the goal is to cook every day, for example, or to cook with a certain quality or to cook with a certain mm -hmm. stuff. And then you have to decide what kind of actions do you need to take to build up that habit. Mm. So in the future, you don't have to think about it anymore. Mm. And that's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's difficult. And that's, of, of course, that's also mm. the, that's the mindset shift, shift that you have to create. That's the 1% rule of atomic habits, uh, mm -hmm. James Clear. Yeah. It is, um, where do you want to improve? slowly but mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. and if you're improving one percent each day then after a year you'll get almost 38 times better because of the compound interest mm -hmm. um but my my point is um knowing where to focus on because cooking is not mm -hmm. an an end goal mm -hmm. yeah if i'm baking my eggs then i'm also cooking but what does it mean What do you want to become, basically? Mm. So yeah. it's building the habit of new skills or new habits. Or... Okay. So in lifebook terms, when we uh, the way lifebook works is we have these areas, right? Uh, or we call them categories. And we work on them. We write our uh, PVPS, which I believe will live in the area, which is just going clarity on what is my vision and purpose for this category? And then we choose the strategies. Then we do something called mastery, which is where we set the goals. So I'm thinking in, ter in that term, when you set the goals, then to achieve those goals, you're creating the project and mm -hmm. you're working on the project at, at, until a point where they become habits and they become no longer projects. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I like this. <laughs> this is really cool. So Perfect. again, a question. One of the things I struggle with, and I did see a question about how this applies to people with ADD or ADHD. I'll send some resources later because it's like um, most systems, different people work in different ways. Oops, okay. <clears throat> right? It, our minds are different. So we need to tailor and customize systems for ourselves. One of the ways that I found that, uh, the getting things done method helpful uh, with that ADHD kind of mind is because we kind of get distracted real quick. We love novelty, you know? I'm like in the middle of something and I get to the right, to the end, and all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, some, something new, let me start there. But We also get bored real quick and deadlines really work for me. So one of the way, best ways that works for me is I just say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I want the novelty. I want to go out of the house. I work from the house. So I want to go out and have fun. So can I finish all the things on my action list in two hours so I can go? And guess what? It works. I, I actually do it without all the stress and the thinking and the distractions. And I'm like, well, I got all day, you know? So that's one technique. But um, what I wanted to uh, say here is that I'll, I'll share, um, sorry, who, who was the question from uh, Kelly? I'll share more information. Um, you're in, in the Lifebook community, I'll share it in the event description, uh, different techniques for people with um, ADD or ADHD. Uh, but basically I, what I want us to do right now is like, okay, we're listening to this, chat we're talking about maybe implementing this new system so we have a goal some of, some people here have a goal of changing their productivity system or create a new system or and also some a lot of people are taking notes so they're gathering information we want to talk about a little bit how can we convert these what we're learning here into action and how can we file this information 
But before I jump into that, I want to finish up with the parameters. The resources and the archive, are they separate from the project and the area? Or do you have resources and archives in projects and resources and archives in areas? Like if I'm, if I'm building this in, I, I believe you're using Notion. If you're building this in yeah. Notion, how does it look like? The, does each one, is, a, is each one a different bucket? Or are resources what, what, related to the project? What I use yeah. mm -hmm. um, is Notion is kind of similar who, who, for the people who don't know it. It's kind of similar as Excel. So it's data-driven. It's a database. And you can link other databases to each other mm -hmm. quite easily. And within uh, Excel, you can also filter out certain things. Mm -hmm. And what I did in Notion is I made a checklist um, button mm -hmm. and when it's archived then it removes itself from my list mm -hmm. so when a project is a certain state mm -hmm. um, or it's archived then it gets removed from my list so I don't have to look at it anymore and that's the same for um, resources I barely um, delete anything but I just resource it away from my system, but it's still there. But I can do that for projects and I can do that for resources as well. You can do this, for example, in Windows Explorer. So normal your, your file explorer. Um, but that makes it a little bit less convenient. It's less easy. Mm. because yeah within the digital world you have some so many great options to archive things and to filter stuff away and that's that's totally based on what is your preference system mm. okay so you you use notion for your projects for uh areas for resources for everything um i mostly experimented with notion mm. um and my action management is fully on Notion, mm. but I have my information management. Yeah, information management is kind of also in Notion, mm -hmm. but my calendar, for example, is in Google Calendar yeah. because it connects much better with Calendly, which I use to book um, hours with me. Um, and I have another system called Obsidian, and mm. Obsidian is for uh, crafting ideas within the uh, yeah settle custom method, but that's that's yeah. also another thing. So that's outside yeah. of the para uh, constraint. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of of programs, mm -hmm. and I'm constantly checking as if is there another program I can use. Mm. But I'm not I'm not limited by one program. It's mm. it's method based. So that's why it's also the, the difference between the software or the system, but it's method based. And I'm thinking, I want to use this method. How can I streamline my, my process as easy as possible um, with my required wishes mm -hmm. for whatever reason? So this is where my next question comes in. Like, I've tried to use methods like these with, uh, I use Coda, I use Notion before and I use Coda. Coda is very similar to Notion. But then I find myself, for example, I have my emails, I have Google Drive, you know, I have a lot of resources in Google Drive, especially if I'm sharing and working with pro on projects with different people. So we have different apps that we're using. I'm trying to implement the same method in each of these areas, but I feel like this stress building up because I don't know where things are. I'm like, everything is not in one place. So I don't have a clear picture. So I'm like, no. do I have projects here? I have projects there. I have actions here. So what would be your advice with this system of how can we make sure that we have a clear vision of everything and we, you know, or, or, do you put everything in Notion in that table in that no. spreadsheet or no, how, no, how does no. it work for you? 
um, go slowly. Mm. Think about what do you want to achieve. It is important to have full control over your system, mm. but start slowly. If you want to create a book list, start slowly, connecting it to the authors or whatever, or pieces of information. Um, what I do during um, the course, for example, is first cleaning out the mailbox and filter and um, converging them into actions. Mm -hmm. So creating the bucket. Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff is on your mind? To um, reduce those um, um, uh, those loose ropes, mm -hmm. loose ends. Mm -hmm. um, because it creates such presence at the moment, even though the actions aren't filtered yet, but at least you've seen everything, your mailbox is fully fully Done. cleaned out. <laughs> yeah, but that's such a big one for so many people yeah. because at the morning they start a mail or their day and they're looking at a mail, a thousand mails. It creates a stress level. Mm -hmm. Have I seen everything? Am I not missing anything important? Am I not? So that first step, it could take days, to be mm -hmm. honest, per person or per group. Because they accumulated years of work, mm -hmm. of stuff that they might have to do something with, maybe, I don't know. Um, and after that moment, most of the time it's somehow an emotional release as in ah, i'm finally free somehow yeah so that's the first step and then going through the next ones as in depending on your computer skills or e even if you want use use a paper filtering out of the four categories for actions and then using one agenda so not someone for work uh, something for work not something private but create one agenda where everything is in mm -hmm. and only the things that are time and yeah time bound basically mm -hmm. uh, date and time bound mm -hmm. um, because you have to fully trust your system to be here if you don't trust your system then it's like yeah maybe 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 yeah and then that creates stress. And mm -hmm. that's what we call, to be honest, we don't manage stress. We don't. Yeah. We manage the things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling stressed, then there, there could be something that you haven't attended to properly. Mm -hmm. And that's something you slowly need to go through. And I know it's myself. I, I'm not perfect in my system. I still have some stuff that is not perfect yet. But I know when I'm seeing something and it's like, oh, that was a hidden uh, mm -hmm. task or something wasn't going well. Okay, process it. Because mm -hmm. in the future, then everything will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the mindset of building the habit of seeing something and processing it slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. So go slow. Keep it simple, simplify it as if you can put things in one place, use one uh, place for work and personal and everything. I'm guessing don't use don't use your inbox as a task management thing. Just put it in where you are, you have your actions, wherever you manage it. The tool doesn't matter as long as it's just only in one place, all in those categories. Now action, next action, someday, maybe, uh, follow-up, waiting list, whatever it's called. Keep it simple, yeah. And uh, what was the last point? Um, yeah, process whatever comes. Don't feel hard on yourself that your system isn't perfect. It's never going to be perfect. We're going to miss things, right? And when something comes up, say, aha, uh -huh, you sneaky little thing. I'm going to put you where you need to be now. <laughs> no stress, no fuss. And then we improve the system as we go along, right? Yeah, and, and that kind of also creates the mind like water idea. Uh, idea. Mm -hmm. As in, you are fully present right now. 
And once something comes up, it's like, sure, let me write it down. Because I decide what I'm going to write down. Mm. No one else, not my boss, not anyone. Not mm. that I have a boss, but that's a different yeah. story. <laughs> um, but you can decide what you let into your system. Mm. And if you let something into your system, then you process it with your bucket. Everything comes in your bucket and then you process it. Mm -hmm. And then you're fully in control again. So then the water quiets down. Mm -hmm. And it creates such a special feeling. It creates an inner peace. Mm. So that's, that's the level beneath that. Yeah. And, and everyone is like that if we filter out the chaos. Yeah. So how do we do it now? Now I'm sure most people here took notes and they're after this call, they're probably gonna do something else and those notes are gonna stay on their desks or in their phones. Can they, what, what uh, advice do you give us? What can we do now, right this moment before say, we say goodbye with these notes and this any action well, we wrote down? Right now, just being here. That, mm -hmm. That's the first important thing. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is, what do you feel like you haven't look to yourself, to your system, to whatever? What do you feel like that you haven't fully haven't got under control? Mm. Could be anything. And then slowly go through that, filter that, and create actions mm. to solve it. Mm. First, not doing the actions itself, except when it's a really easy one, but just write down, ah, still have to pay that one, still have to do that one, still have to call that one. Write it down, create one list mm -hmm. and do that for two weeks, for three weeks, whatever you need. And then slowly go, in, go through the, the tasks. And once something new comes in, add it to your task list and work from there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not really a magic pill. I cannot say you have to do this right now. Mm -hmm. It's building up the habit on there is so much chaos in the world. Let's slowly look at it. Okay, mm -hmm. where can we improve this part? Yeah. Um, well, you're going to share my my uh, my LinkedIn. I'm pretty open with almost every information that I have. Mm -hmm. So also in my Twitter, also all the information is um, more active on Instagram now, posting mm -hmm. the stuff there. Just slowly going through it. That's basically the biggest, uh, biggest thing. Yeah, the atomic habits, building atomic habits. Yeah. So I had one question from the one more question from the audience. I hope I didn't miss anything. Asking, what do you use for habit tracking? If you use any tools, do you track even your habits? Not really. Mm. Um, I personally, I have posted notes in on my mirror, as in mm -hmm. these are the things that I want to build. Mm -hmm. And there are like three or four or five of them maximum. Mm -hmm. Because I, after I built them, I remove them from my stuff. Otherwise, you will be focused on a system creating habits. Okay, mm -hmm. drink two liters of water every day. Do this, do that. 1%. What is right now the most important thing that you want to improve in? Mm. It could be drinking two liters of water. Mm -hmm. It could be waking up right after the alarm clock goes off. Mm -hmm. It's really useful to do that. Mm -hmm. um, could be anything, but have two or three of them. Do that for three days, four days. And if you feel like that's built, then remove the post it and, and give something new mm. in it. Okay. So don't focus yeah. yourself on documenting the process habits, or at least I don't. Interesting. Yeah, that's that. That's the first type. It's the first time I'm hearing this kind of uh, approach. It's really interesting. Just keeping top of mind, what, you know, that habit uh, that you're trying to build. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Tim. This has been really uh, interesting. Great reminder of getting things done it's been years since i've gone through this system but before people go please i want you to take some time to go over your notes right now and see if there's any place where you wrote dot 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 because you didn't complete your idea since the ideas are fresh in your head complete those sentences before you go off 
Zoom. And if you have any questions, write them down, send them to me or to Tim, and we'll be happy to respond. And I'll share some resources as well, whether it's getting things done, uh, the book, as well as the information I promised uh, Kelly about ADHD and how to adapt this to that. And yeah, what is the next action you're going to take after uh, investing one hour with us today? Write that down as well. And thank you so much. Final words, Tim? No, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Great conversation and uh, very insightful. You're most welcome. Thanks for sharing. So remember, it's not about the methods or the systems. Start slowly and see whatever works for you. Again, a reminder, whatever works for you, don't change it. And if we want to change anything, remember it takes time. Be patient gradually, one thing at a time, slowly make the changes. And hopefully you'll have a good system that changes overwhelm to more inner peace. <laughs> have a good day, everyone. See you in our next session. Bye. <laughs>